Inflation fears. The market's down today. We had the morning pop, then it sold off with midday, and now it's selling off again. We've got some, uh, we've got some inflation fears. That's what the video is called today. I said it ahead of time. I said it this morning, saying it again now. Inflation fears. The inflation wasn't that it wasn't too bad, but it's not coming down the rate that um, the Fed want it to. And of course, we've got the uncertainty of where we go next year with Trump in power. Let me be absolutely clear. Um, Jerome Powell isn't going anywhere. He can't fire him and, and he's not going anywhere. They're going to complete the job. There's no doubt about it. Jerome Powell wants to complete the job. What we've got is uh, the market selling off as expected. We've got a few, uh, we've got a week or so, about 10 days away, I think it is, from what's most important, PPE. That's uh, uh, the, pr uh, the price, uh, the, the price, the um, price, the price, I forgot the name of it now, doesn't matter. You know what I'm talking about, the, the producer's, producer's price index. There we go, PPI. That's what people are looking out for. So we've got this selling off before we go into the Santa rally. I do believe it. It's healthy. And if you look, if you stand back and actually look at the SNP, look, you know, am I down? Of course, I'm not down. Am I worried? Of course, I'm not worried. Look out. I mean, it's been phenomenal, phenomenal returns. But people are selling off to buy back up again. It's not a problem at all. But it's because inflation is sticky. And a good way to explain it is this. I'm going to share it on the screen. So it presents great opportunity for people to buy great businesses that are being sold off to buy potentially rubbish on the Russell. Uh, anyway, let me share with you. This is just out a few moments ago. Uh, yes, uh, literally about half an hour ago. Brand new stuff. The Nasdaq falls, S&P off high with tech stocks under pressure. No surprise there whatsoever. We've been saying the same thing forever. PCE inflation staying sticky. Yes, it is. We reported on it live this morning, covered it live and said inflation is a bit sticky. It's not coming down uh, at the rate we want it to come down. Now, let's remember, let's remind ourselves, uh, prices will always go up. It's the rate they go up that we're trying to cal we're trying to calm down and and slow the rate of inflation. The the overall inflation is coming down. The Fed is winning, but what this means is we're not going to get rate cuts as fast as we would like, and that's good. That is good. We want steady, steady, steady control over the economy. We don't want any more half a percent. It's why we had a big uh, half a percent the first time, and now we call it down. There'll probably be a 0.25 in December because we've still got strong growth. Everything's okay. Uh, uh, jobs is, is under control. We'll probably get a 0.25, but don't expect more than that. And then we might have a couple of months without anything. But doesn't matter. It's coming. This... this um, uh, uh, high rates uh, on on the on the economy has a lagging effect. It takes time for it to filter through, and it is working. It'll just take a bit more time. Have patience. So this new story I want to share with you it talks about it. Wall Street today having a bit of a sell off. So let's have a look at it. Uh, major U.S. stocks in indexes lost ground on Wednesday as investors waded through a slew of economic data and some disappointing corporate financial updates ahead of the Thanksgiving Day holiday. Alongside signals of softness from tech store marts, the Federal Reserve's uh, preferred inflation gauge showed stalled movement downward toward the central bank's 2% inflation target. Wednesday's data flurry arrived after Tuesday's record closing highs for the S&P and the Dow uh, extended their robust year-to-date gains. On Wednesday, the S&P 500 down 0.4% in afternoon trade uh, and, and the Dow down 0.3%. The Nasdaq Composite down 0.7. Tech was the weakest sector on, on, on among the S&P 500 11 groups. Obviously, because it's outperformed the rest. So where do you take profit from? Tech. Obviously. So this is a great time to buy either tech or the S&P. Now, the S&P might not be down that much. You might think, eh, it's not down that much. I don't know if I want to buy it. But remember, it's not down that much because the overall S&P is improving and growing. The other sector, the other uh, the other elements of the, um, the S&P are growing and doing well. So what happens is when you buy on days like this, because I don't normally buy small drops like this, but when it drops like this because of one sector, it means everything else is doing well, but the price is down. So what does that mean? What that means is, is when we buy... 
when we buy the S&P and the, the sector that's down, which is the tech sector, turn back up again, my S&P is going to go up really quickly because that's the side that's down at the moment. So rather than buy the individual stock and go, am I going to buy some NVIDIA today? Am I going to buy some Google today? I just buy the, the S&P. Normally, I buy on an overall macro condition, like a war breaking out or whatever. But today, I can see an advantage with buying today. Now, am I going to buy today? Probably not because I'm enough in margin and uh, my margin is way under control. But I have about 6% I can buy. I have about 6%. Now, if I do buy today, then that, that reduces what I can spend in, on January the 1st. Because on January the 1st, I want to use $8,000 to transfer to my Roth to get a 3% back. So really, it's probably a little bit too much. Uh, if we had a 10% drop today, it'd be a no-brainer. But for me, it's no point as I know what... Because remember, I always have several moves ahead. I know what I'm going to do next. If I didn't know and wasn't planning what I would be doing next, I'd be going... I'm going to buy this because the tech sector is being sold off and we know how good value NVIDIA is, the forward PE. We know which is going to pump this back up again. So I could buy the S&P today. In my mind, I'm doing all these calculations thinking, you know, I could buy the S&P today. However, uh, and I've got about 6%, so I've probably got about $10,000. But if I use about $10,000, which is great. I mean, wonderful. Another $10,000 worth of the S&P. Hoorah. Um, then I've got the downside to the fact I've only got two to go into next year. And that's not a major problem, but it's not quite there. It's not quite there for me yet. So anyway, there's the news of why there's a scare today. So Wall Street is selling off. Um, and that's uh, that's how I am looking at it. Uh, and uh, you never know. If we get a bit of a dip tonight in the, in the after hours, you may find tomorrow I've said I've just bought 10 shares of the S&P and split the difference. Click above my head for all the links down below in the description. Over here, I'll put the extra channel, our Martin Lucas Investor Extra Radio Show, live 24 hours a day. It's your show. You can have what you want as I earn on ad revenue. So please just let that those ads run. Become a, a YouTube premium customer and you won't see any ads at all. Um, and uh, every penny I earn from ad revenue goes into paying for the technical charts and stuff that I add on the screen. Um, I, the time it's, it takes me is just me, you know, that's my gift to you. I just want to do it, but I spend the money on building the service. Uh, that's over here. And down here, I shall put my alpha spread playlist, which I think is really important now for the stock reviews of what stocks to buy and which ones not to. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other.